Well, welcome everybody. Uh, we're giving folks a couple of minutes just to uh, fill up the room, but we're absolutely delighted to see everybody who's joining us uh, late this evening in New York and uh, nice and healthy in the morning in, in Shanghai. Uh, my name is Michael Diamond and I serve as the uh, clinical assistant professor at NYU School of Professional Studies and as an academic director for our marketing and PR programs in the school's division of programs in business. Um, as many of you know, we are a broad, diverse, and global community of students, scholars, professionals, and educators. And we believe profoundly that marketing and PR can have a really positive impact on building a just, equitable, and sustainable society and economy. And, and we believe, too, that we have an opportunity to explore and engage in the many aspects that drive the transformation of marketing and PR practices today. So, you know, it really is in that context that we are delighted to welcome you now to the second in a series of conversations and insights that are focused on what lessons can we learn from China in terms of the transformation of marketing and PR. And I want to thank particularly my colleague Paul Lin uh, for helping initiate and co-host this series and also thank Bryce Whitwam who introduced us to Gary Chu our guests for the evening and who will moderate the conversation today along, along with Paul. Um, as we intend, we'd like to focus a lens on innovation and change that's being driven by marketing and PR professionals in China and the companies they lead. And it also give us an opportunity to learn more insights about the experience and behavior of consumers who are interacting in this rapidly changing ecosystem. The study of marketing and PR at NYU School of Professional Studies is rooted in the idea that our practice is both human-centered and data-driven, and that we are further a part of a broader, global, diverse, and inclusive community that's dedicating, dedicated to applying our knowledge and our scholarship to professional practice. Um, in this context, it's an absolute pleasure to welcome Paul Lin back. Paul is a highly experienced and innovative marketing executive, a strategist, a brand marketer, a savvy digital thinker, and an accomplished leader, uh, and has played senior management roles across bbd &O, Taxi, Wonderman, Saatchi and & Saatchi, and OMD. Um, Paul also serves as a chairman of the Marketing and Media Committee for the American Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Bryce Whitwin equally um, uh, equally accomplished and, um, uh, you know, very uh, cherished and honored in our industry, was the CEO for China for MRM, spent over 10 years as the Greater China CEO for Wonderman, and was previously a managing director for Ogilvy. Uh, and frankly, we could not be more delighted that both Paul and Bryce are teaching in our classrooms at NYU SBS, uh, sharing their wisdom and their insights with our students in the Masters of Science of integrated marketing. So without further ado, I'll pass the uh, baton over to Bryce and Paul and uh, welcome our guest, Gary Chu. All right, thanks. Thanks you very much. Uh, uh, so um, I think uh, today, uh, really honored to, uh, to, to have Gary, Gary with us today. And, uh, um, and we will, uh, We'll, I think Gary will start off the, with a, a short presentation about uh, about the dynamics of e-commerce, and then we will uh, we will uh, start a, a panel discussion Q and A, and we welcome your your comments and questions as well. So uh, um, so with with that, without further ado, I'll turn it over to Gary. So, um, sorry, just uh, let me share with you my screen. Yeah. Okay. Hi, good evening and good morning, everyone. Yeah, so let me introduce myself. Um, um, my name is Gary Chu. I'm uh, I have been with, uh, working with for uh, uh, a lot of company for around uh, seven years, um, um, starting from China and now moving to the global role. So 
actually, I had uh, my background is about uh, uh, e-commerce and the CRM. I have been in, in this industry for around 20 years, mainly in the beauty and the luxury industry. Um, I uh, have um, started my uh, uh, career with a, a company called Burstman in China and uh, very uh, much from the CRM, uh, uh, to, to set up a CRM business for China uh, as a Burstman in China. And then joined the company as a lot uh, in year 2014 uh, 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 to set up an e-commerce business. Um, today, I will share with everyone about uh, a quick uh, presentation about uh, the Chinese landscape, uh, digital landscape, and how the China e-commerce uh, digital ecosystem looks like, and how the uh, how does that work, and what will, will be our uh, 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 what the future looks like. So, to uh, for those people who are really want to know about the China e-commerce, I think we should start to learn from the Chinese digital e uh, uh, ecosystem. So the new BAT. So in China, that I guess people might be very familiar with that uh, Baidu because that's uh, all we uh, uh, all uh, where we start our our, our digital in China. Um, recently, there's a, a new uh, uh, BAT uh, which may, uh, mainly come from uh, um, uh, the ByteDance, which is actually the uh, the the the, uh, the rising force in China, focused on the uh, bite-sized uh, engagement and entertainment. Um, so Baidu actually is a, is a very traditional uh, uh, search engine and they are very much focused on the uh, 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 information providing based on the search uh, 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 search engine, yeah. And Alibaba, that's a, this is a, 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 is, a, is, a, is a company very much focused on the e-commerce and uh, pro very much, much product-centric. They have multiple apps. You, the, maybe the, uh, the most important app you might know that is, uh, is a Taobao, right? So with Taobao, that's, you are able to access Alibaba Tmall, which is an online market platform. And uh, also they are very famous for the double 11 campaign. So I guess lots of people know uh, China because of double 11. And Tencent actually recently um, is very active in the e-commerce uh, 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 space, and uh, but their major focus is still the uh, the the, the, uh, the social and the community uh, focus, and very much focus on connected people and the connect uh, uh, the community. And the ByteDance, as I just uh, quickly uh, introduced, uh, they are the rising force in China digital space, and they actually uh, provided the short video content and also the live streaming content. So this is a quite a unique uh, situation that in China there's this BAT actually they compete from all aspects. Yeah, so um, take the, uh, this actually give everyone a, a view, uh, an overview about uh, where they are uh, uh, focusing on and where they are competing against each other. So take the Alibaba example, they have the uh, e-commerce part which is uh, based on their top up uh, app and they also have the live streaming, and uh, uh, this is a, a is a quite new uh, 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 technology and a tight new uh, uh, business model. And they also have the search. So uh, I will go deep dive with Alibaba later, but uh, just uh, uh, let you know that Alibaba actually now becomes the largest search engine, knowing that they already have uh, so many product information and the UGC on their platform. And uh, they also have the Alipay, um, um, uh, the uh, the e-wallet and the super app and uh, for e-commerce part they have uh, two platforms one is Taobao for C2C and uh, another is Tmall for uh, B2C part. So Tencent actually is uh, doing quite similar as uh, as uh, uh, Alibaba is doing but with uh, different strengths. So Tencent's most strengths actually this is about the social. So they have uh, WeChat and the QQ. Yeah. So these are two super app and the most of Chinese people are uh, are living with. And the reason is they are very aggressive entering into the mini program, which is a very uh, e-commerce uh, uh, focus, and uh, with uh, also with the live streaming um, um, uh, um, 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 with the live streaming uh, activities. And they acquired a company called Sogo, and this actually the, uh, was one of the uh, biggest Chinese uh, um, search engines. They integrated the Sogo. Uh, search engine with them, which are a mini program with lots of innovation. So one one example is when you chat with your friends, you can do the search 
with, within the, the chat box and without leaving the app. And for payment, actually in China, there are two biggest uh, e-wallet. One is Alipay, another is, uh, is WeChat Pay. So these two payment uh, um, uh, uh, tools, the uh, e-wallets, they compete against each other and they, they have their own focus area. So WeChat uh, very much focus on the, uh, the retail and the Alipay focus on online. And for the e-commerce part, Tencent has a um, different uh, strategy. So one is uh, they did lots of investment in the uh, in the e-commerce uh, part, uh, uh, retail pattern like um, JD. Another also is also they are doing their own e-commerce platform like a mini program. So buy dance is is very very uh, um, hot topic recently. Um, one of the maybe people are not familiar with buy dance, but the, most of people know Douyin and the TikTok, right? So actually, ByteDance is a mother company of the of Douyin and the TikTok, and they are very much focused on the short video, the the three D um, uh, 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 media format, and also the live streaming is one of their uh, focus area as well. And um, recently, they acquired a payment company, and uh, uh, too big. So we all uh, we might heard a, a lot about what. Uh, 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 by dance want to do, and they want to also set up as a closed loop to maybe to uh, to uh, to drive the, the conversion within the ecosystem, uh, and not only to direct traffic to other to other place. Yeah. So recently, TikTok and Douyin is very active in uh, in the uh, uh, e-commerce uh, part. So these are the three major digital giants in China. They actually compete with each other. To know China, so we have to start to know these three uh, 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 giants. So this is a little bit uh, uh, um, de uh, more details about how the Alibaba and uh, uh, Tencent experience looks like, because uh, 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 um, I will talk about uh, these two um, bigger giants um, at a late stage. So Alibaba actually, the, this is, they are changing the way how consumer, how people are shopping. Yeah. So you, you basically when uh, you, you live in China and you, uh, you can buy uh, almost everything from uh, the Alibaba platform. So majority, the uh, there's a major platform actually Taobao. So this is uh, the most famous platform. So we, uh, so we think Taobao is actually the super app. They have uh, not only, uh, they are not only a platform just for sales, they're also a platform for the content. So you will see that uh, on Taobao platform, they have a uh, reason they launched uh, the, the short video on Taobao and replace, just to replace the still pictures for the uh, for recommended product. And also um, they are very famous for the, um, for the live streaming. So you will see, uh, you, you, heard a, you, might, uh, you must hear, hear a lot uh, about their KOL live streaming like Austin Lee and We Are. These are two KOL. To drive the majority of the uh, uh, of the Taobao live streaming sales. So on top of the KOL live streaming, they also uh, encourage the brand to do the brand live streaming. Yeah. So, so this is another aspect. The um, the um, where the, uh, how the live streaming is is going up in China. The search engine. So this actually was a uh, uh, big now Taobao has become the uh, has become the biggest search engine uh, uh, in China. This is mainly because a couple of reasons. The, the one, one of the major reasons is that Taobao has already received most of the brand on that platform. And you will see the uh, um, most, uh, uh, you can find all of the products from these brands and all, all of the information, all of the content. So with the su sufficient supply of the content and the product, consumer can, have, can get a better, best, better result from Taobao compared with other search engine. So payment and uh, local service, these are two uh, uh, very new. Um, so payment is not new, actually. Payment like Alipay and WeChat, this has been uh, existing in China for a long while. Um, most of, Chinese, um, mo uh, most of Chinese, Chinese people, they don't really have uh, the credit card, but they, they almost everyone have the e-wallet, yeah. So WeChat and, uh, and, and Alipay has been uh, existing in China for a long while, but how to use the WeChat and Alipay to drive the local service, this is become a new competition area. And I will talk about this later, uh, how uh, the local service looks like. So in terms of the e-commerce, actually, if you look at Alibaba e-commerce, they have the domestic business like Timor, and they have also cross-border business like Timor Global. 
And uh, this is all about uh, this is all about the D, uh, um, B2C part, but also they have the C2C part and the, for the individual seller, which is Taobao. So let's look at the tension experience, how the tension experience looks like. So tension actually is a change the way how people connect to each other. Yeah. So Alibaba is about uh, the connection, uh, uh, how to connect people with the product, but it's tense, what Tencent focuses on is how to connect people with people, yeah. So these are the, uh, are the very different focus. So Tencent is very strong for the social, social connection. So we, um, most of the people connect to each other through Tencent, maybe kids connect to each other with, Q, with QQ, yeah. And also they are very much focused on the, uh, 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 um, the um, how to better, better connect with the, uh, between among people and the content, and then now recently they want to connect the people with the commerce part. Yeah, and the live streaming actually has become a new phenomenon in China. So Tencent is also actively uh, uh, participating uh, in this uh, competition, and then with the recent uh, um, acquisition of Sogo, so Tencent is able to enable the search engine with the live chat. So this actually is a great example that when I, uh, for example, I chat uh, with my friends with uh, 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 with live chat on, on on WeChat. So someone, if my, uh, my friend, if my, if my friend mentions uh, uh, the one brand, then I can do the search uh, immediately within this um, uh, uh, chat box, but without leaving this uh, app. So so everything will be done within one app, and uh, this will change the the way how consumer do the search. I believe, personally, I believe this will create a huge impact on the future, uh, the, uh, the, the future search, search engine market. So the payment service Tencent actually has a, has a WeChat payment. So WeChat is a very powerful uh, to us. And they also have the launched their own uh, local service. And uh, this also through the merger and the uh, uh, strategic investment. Yeah, I might cover this topic later. So e-commerce actually, um, Different from Alibaba, what Alibaba has been doing, Tencent did a lot of strategic investment in the multiple uh, company like uh, JD, like Pinduoduo, and also recently they are doing, uh, they are launched their new technology called the Mini Program to enable the brand to do the e-commerce within their e their WeChat ecosystem. So this, with this uh, overview of, uh, of the, how the Chinese digital ecosystem looks like, I will, then I will walk you through a deep dive of how the Alibaba ecosystem looks like. The why I want to talk about Alibaba, because uh, if we, we talk about the Chinese e-commerce, so Alibaba today account for maybe 70% uh, of the total Chinese e-commerce market, yeah. So this is the is, is most important uh, ecosystem um, uh, we need to work together. So Alibaba model is very sophisticated. It's not only uh, Tmall, right? Tmall is a uh, is well known because this is a uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, is designed for domestic Chinese consumer and uh, 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 for um, uh, to support all of the brand to connect with the consumers through this platform. But they also have the cross border business called Tmall Global. These two, two platforms we call the third, uh, 3PP. I will talk about it later why we call it this 3PP because basically this man, uh, Alibaba manages a good balance between uh, uh, among the, the brand, the consumer, and the platform to, uh, to enable the brand to talk to the consumer directly on their platform. They also have the cross border retail business. So, so which means the, 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 the the record of the merchant is Alibaba itself. So they have the Tmall direct import. This is a, 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 a team, a part of the Tmall Global. Then they also have the, they also have acquired a company called the Cola uh, Cross Border. So this was, uh, this actually the platform was uh, owned by um, uh, NetEase previously, then recently acquired by Alibaba. So these two are actually the cross border um, um, and retail business, yeah. And they also have the local service mainly uh, through two platforms. One is that uh, Alipay, as I just as I mentioned previously, and another is uh, is Elma. Elma is uh, is uh, is uh, is a food delivery. So, uh, in last year uh, during the uh, um, COVID nineteen period, and also when the city uh, locked down, there most of people actually living with Elma. Uh, yeah, so you can get a food delivery and uh, to uh, to for the home delivery. Yeah. 
So this actually one, um, uh, this actually already changes lots of Chinese uh, consumers' behavior. So how they should get how they get the food, how they get the food at home, and uh, because this is a uh, is is super communist um, uh, survey. So I will cut uh, uh, talk about this model later. And they are also have there are lots of innovation about the the, the, the new retail. So this is uh, this actually the word in created by Alibaba. How we how they join join the new retail. So if I look at the, how Alibaba new retail model looks like, there are only three models today. So this has been a proven a successful model. So one model is actually their department store model. They are quite a company called uh, Intai. So Intai is a Chinese uh, department store, and also they launch a separate app to support the department. Yeah. Uh, department store. So another model is uh, we they call it the uh, uh, Hema. The, in English is a fresh a fresh uh, grocery retail. So you basically you can buy the fresh food, you can buy the meat, you can buy the vegetables through this uh, this model. So this is a very geographic geographic based uh, business model. So you, uh, so people uh, the uh, the design to serve the people within three kilo. Um, yeah, within three kilo. Yeah. And uh, 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 another one is uh, is, uh, is a supermarket model. That was actually the, uh, the 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 model Alibaba started uh, uh, at the very beginning. Yeah. So Alibaba also recently uh, entered into the duty free uh, 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 segment. So through the joint venture with uh, with their uh, duty free, the Europe based uh, company. And in South Asia, Asia, Alibaba also acquired a company called Lazada. Yeah. So, so one of the most among all of this uh, fantastic model, I think one of the most important model for Alibaba actually is a uh, is a three PP model. Yeah. So this actually is a, is a, is a, is a design to uh, is a design well balanced among the platform consumer and the brand. So um, brand has a uh, has a uh, uh, has a, uh, 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 the power enabled by Alibaba to talk to consumer directly, and the brand actually can be the, the the record of the merchant. Yeah, so this will allow the brand to talk to consumer uh, directly, leveraging the whole ecosystem, the leverage traffic, and leverage technology, and the leverage the, the, the all of the innovation Alibaba develop. And there's a similar model actually is JD. Yeah, so JD also has uh, their own uh, their three PP model. And uh, but of course, JD has uh, two models actually: the the three PP model and uh, and and the wholesale model. So um, today, if you look at the JD, the uh, JD actually more focused on wholesale, and Alibaba is more focused on the three PP. Yeah, and three um, PP actually not only serve for domestic, also for the uh, cross border. So take the Alibaba example; they have the team more global. So this is the three PP to serve the global cross border business. This is. Uh, Mainly designed for the rest of the world to China, and they also have the China to rest of the world model, which is AliExpress. And then you also see the um, the similar uh, arrangement with uh, with JD. They call the JD worldwide. Yeah, so JD wide, uh, worldwide is uh, is is uh, uh, is competing against Ali Alibaba Tmall Global. Um, so um, uh, in the cross border area. So the local service. So actually, when we talk about the local service, we mainly talk about two things. One is the e-wallet because this is the base, the foundation, or how the, uh, uh, the internet giant in China to enable the local service. Another is uh, is is very much focused on the on-demand food delivery. Yeah. So uh, Alibaba uh, acquired a company called Elma, but uh, uh, WeChat, as I mentioned, they acquired uh, they did the strategic investment. Uh, in the company called the Meituan. These two actually are, are, are very important APP and uh, most of the Chinese people can uh, live with this APP, yeah. So you can get a meal, get the snacks, get the, uh, the beverage, get the grocery with, uh, with uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, 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 app. And the service is quite, uh, uh, quite uh, 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 convenient and quite fast. <clears throat> The reason they can um, this company can do that because it mainly because they have a very strong uh, uh, infrastructure which is the e wallet structure yeah so which actually uh, uh, in China meaning uh, uh, two e wallet actually uh, has a larger consumer base one is AliPay another is uh, uh, is WeChat Pay <clears throat> so new retail model so the actually this is a this has been a hot topic for almost. Uh, Maybe three to five years uh, until recently, we see the 
uh, how the model uh, involved to a uh, grocery shopping model, because the model actually starting from the, uh, the department store, like uh, 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 that's why Alibaba acquired the Yingtai a couple of years ago. And at the very beginning, uh, lots of companies also uh, put a huge effort on the supermarket model. But in the end, now the, it's, it seems like the, 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 the promise model due to the grocery shopping, like uh, what Alibaba is doing with Hema, is uh, English name called the fresh shipple, right? So basically, you can, you can um, buy everything. Uh, so the, uh, the fresh foods, the, the meat, the vegetable from, from the, uh, uh, from the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the fresh uh, ship uh, nearby your apartment. It uh, typically it's uh, it is uh, it is take around thirty minutes to one hour to uh, to receive the the, the products. So that's why it's uh, so that's why Alibaba and uh, and and the other other internet company they are very focused on so they call it the three kilometer uh, economic uh, uh, cycle. Yeah. So between we. Uh, in each three kilo, uh, kilometer economic cycle, you will have one store. So this will mainly serve the, uh, um, the, the consumer living in that area and it's super convenient. Yeah, I, I, I guess for most of the Chinese students, you, ever, you have uh, the chance to try this uh, when you live in China. So the live streaming. Um, I, I guess that uh, you have read lots of news recently about uh, how the live streaming uh, 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 is overtaking the uh, 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 the the e-commerce uh, uh, um, e-commerce e uh, in, in China. Um, this actually, from my point of view, this is uh, is a game changer model because this is not the TV shopping. Yeah, uh, lots of people say live streaming is another kind of the TV shopping. The answer is no, because uh, the live streaming actually is. Uh, is a uh, is a uh, is a fully uh, is is fully leveraged how uh, the internet, so they can uh, use live streaming to uh, to maintain the followers, and to drive the dynamic content and to, to do the um, uh, recommendation based on uh, the consumer be be uh, behavior. Yeah. So the other uh, uh, so when we talk about live, live streaming, it's not only about the live streaming sales. So there are uh, different models. For example, we can use live streaming to do the sales. This is the most popular model. And we can use live streaming to do the service. Yeah. So lots of, uh, uh, for example, to teach people how to do the makeup. Yeah. How to do the, uh, uh, um, uh, we call this a virtual try on, yeah. how to do the um, uh, skin diagnostic. Yeah. And also, also we can use live streaming to do the live campaign. Yeah. So this actually is, uh, are the three model I, I uh, see uh, uh, recently is, in, is involving in two in the Chinese market. <clears throat> so on top of this kind of the, uh, 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 the internet te technology, the, the latest trend uh, to win the e-commerce in China, we, something we cannot ignore is the key shopping moments. So actually this is, uh, 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 is super critical, especially for the global brands, right? So there are uh, a couple of key moments in China in, in e-commerce environment. So the biggest moment, actually, I, I guess most of people already know that, which, which is double eleven. But double eleven actually starting from uh, October. Yeah. So the the D day is on November eleventh, uh, uh, but the the preheating um, uh, period actually starting from October. So then another bigger event, mainly driven by, uh, uh, created by JD actually, now it's become a, a, a national wide event, actually is a middle year uh, June campaign, yeah. So this actually is, uh, is quite similar as a double 11 campaign in November, but a, a, a relative smaller scale compared versus double 11. And the reason is there's a new key shopping moments called a March Queenston campaign, yeah. So this actually is a is much uh, uh, previously we call the the Women's Day campaign. It's uh, it's March eighth. But the, this can be actually also starting from the end of February. But the D Day will be on March fifth or and um, to March eighth. Yeah. So this is many. Uh, uh, these are the many three major key shopping moments. So if you put these three key shopping moments together, it's accounted for maybe around the, at least fifty percent of the whole year's e-commerce sales. So this actually is a, is a, 
it, it is a super critical for the brands if they want to win China the e-commerce market. So on this, on top of these three key shopping moments, we made majority uh, major. This is are the three key promotion moments. So we also have the gifting moments. Yeah, there are three major gifting moment, moments. One is that we call the Chinese V Day in uh, in August. This is Chinese Valentine's Day, and then the Western Valentine's Day in February. And then the gifting moments in holiday. So these are the three moments designed for the gifting purpose. So to understand the Chinese e-commerce market is not only about to, to understand the, uh, the, 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 the technology and the ecosystem. We also need to understand that these, these uh, six moments. This actually account for maybe 70 to 80% of the two to annual business uh, in China e-commerce uh, market. So this actually is a, a, a <laughs> and maybe this is too complicated for uh, for uh, uh, for uh, for most of people who have not yet uh, uh, entered into the e-commerce uh, 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 industry. So there's the reason there's the lots of conversation, lots of discussion about the private domain, uh, how we can do private domain market, right? Marketing. So I try to um, um, translate this uh, this very uh, difficult to understand the uh, terminology into a uh, Easy um, uh, into a much easier uh, uh, understood uh, uh, wording. Yeah, with uh, uh, most of our marketeer might be very familiar with this wording, which is own media, pay media, and the earn media. So private domain actually is uh, own media. Yeah, so which means that you are able to own the uh, consumer relationship directly. Uh, a typical case for the private domain is uh, if you have your own, if brand have their its own standalone app. This actually is all about private domain. So the so why this become a super topic, a super hot topic? Because knowing that in China we have a bigger digital platform ecosystem, most of brand living in the um, do the business in the ecosystem. So the platform actually allows the brand to own their own territory to talk to the consumer. So that's that's why we have the concept called the private domain. So take Alibaba example. When we say private domain, actually is about. Uh, how you manage the relationship based on your flagship store, how you based on the uh, how manage consumer relationship based on your CRM program, and how you use the store live streaming to communicate with, uh, uh, with your consumer for the service and for sales. And the reason how you use the mini program like virtual try on to engage your consumer. So this is a, this, this is a, uh, is a, is a, is a, is a is a very rough definition about the private domain. So then you also see the public domain and the commercial domain. So commercial domain is about the pay media, yeah. So it's all about the pay media. You need to pay for the search, it's, uh, and you have the pay advertisement, and you have the private uh, platform event like W11. It's not for free, you still need to pay for it. And the reason is there's a lot, uh, uh, lots of, uh, there are big trend to move to the gamif uh, gamification part. And the KOL, KOL live streaming is also uh, kind of the paid media. So this is the pain domain. So then go to the public. Public is, uh, domain is about the uh, own uh, earned media. So you need to earn your traffic, yeah. So this is about the next search, how you manage the SEO and how you manage it. And also how uh, like about the recommendation, the feeds. Yeah, how do you can earn more traffic through uh, through the uh, uh, the right setup for your tag and right setup your content, which allows the system to find you and deliver the content to your consumer, and also a uh, subscription service is a is a typical model of the public domain. Yeah. So <clears throat> this is actually a quick overview about a quick uh, deep dive about uh, Alibaba, how the Alibaba ecosystem look lo looks like, and uh, there's a Recently, there are lots of conversation about uh, the future of a standalone site because uh, um, this actually is mainly driven by the latest uh, uh, um, uh, mini program development with uh, uh, with Tencent. So I will also spend a, a couple of minutes to talk about this part because this is uh, becoming a, a, a new trend and uh, for especially for the global brand, when you, uh, uh, brands think about the, the future of e-commerce, they are not only uh, 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 the, the, the 3PP platform definitely provide the biggest opportunity for the global brand, but most of global brands have their own site 
how to design a right roadmap for the own site. This is also become a very uh, important topic. So this is a how the standalone site involve, uh, uh, involving in Chinese market. So when, if you remember, uh, if uh, uh, people can remember that it was at the very beginning, we drive the traffic through the search engine to our site. So this is that we I call the 1.0 uh, standard alongside this. Uh, the traffic is all from the uh, majority of traffic from the search engine. Of course, there's a lot of traffic from media portal. Yeah. And uh, recently, the topic is this is mainly driven by WeChat is WeChat allows the brand to tap into their network, yeah, to, uh, leverage the mini program. So this and now it was a now this has a chance for the brand to really to uh, to leverage their own site to tap into the uh, uh, largest uh, 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 Chinese uh, uh, social media network, which is WeChat. Yeah, but we could also see. A faster growing trend is life uh, life stream model. So in the end, we uh, I believe that uh, my point of view is there's a bigger opportunity that uh, some of the brand will skip um, the 2.0 model and go to the live stream model directly. Yeah. So th because this will allow the brand to produce a, a 3D content and to use the, the, the live content to interact with, uh, uh, interact with, uh, with their consumer directly and drive high uh, uh, conversion. So there are two Chinese companies are doing that. One is, uh, we all know that uh, uh, TikTok uh, and the Chinese name is Douyin, yeah, from uh, ByteDance company. Another company actually, they just uh, get listed, right? So this is a uh, Kuaizhou, yeah. So Kuaizhou is uh, another company where we focus on the live streaming, yeah. So these are the three um, 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 generation, I will say three model for, uh, for the glow, uh, for the brand stand alongside. So the model one is still such a based. So this will become, this will be still valid. And I believe that Baidu is involved in this model uh, uh, um, very fast as well. Another is a social driven model, which is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is how, uh, for, which is uh, uh, for the brand, how to leverage it and tap into the larger social media network like Alipay, oh sorry, the WeChat, uh, WeChat ecosystem. And the third one is the live stream model. This is mainly driven by the new uh, internet company, uh, new internet giants like uh, Douyin and uh, Kuaizhou. So a quick overview about uh, how which the mini program works. Yeah. So so in which of the mini uh, in which of the ecosystem there's a lot of uh, uh, traffic source. For example, you have the which of the moments. This is the advertisement uh, uh, um, product for the brand. And you have the subscription service. You could follow the KOL in um, um, uh, in the WeChat uh, uh, in the WeChat. And you recently they launched the video uh, 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 video account, so you can also follow the video account. And uh, as I just mentioned uh, previously, that uh, they also acquired a search engine company called Sogo. So you can also connect the search engine uh, search engine uh, with the mini program. Um, lots of brands actually already off, uh, open the official account. Yeah, so this actually is a place how the brand talk to the consumer. Um, to, uh, and the most of brands use this official account to manage a CRM relationship with the uh, consumer relationship with their customer. And the live streaming is also one of the key components um, um, in, um, um, in, in the WeChat ecosystem. And then the latest. Uh, uh, and also related uh, um, evolution is how they combine the live live chat with the search search uh, with the search engine. Yeah. So all of this kind of the ecosystem can work together to support a mini program, which allows the brand to re to to leverage the traffic in the uh, in the in, in the WeChat ecosystem. Yeah. So this, is, I hope this gives uh, uh, our uh, uh, students and our colleagues a, a quick overview about uh, how the overall Chinese ecosystem, uh, digital ecosystem looks like, how the Alibaba ecosystem works, and how the uh, WeChat uh, ecosystem work. Uh, this, uh, I, I hope this will give everyone an understanding about uh, 
uh, how we, if you really want to do the Chinese e-commerce, uh, uh, do the e-commerce in China, this is uh, some very basic uh, 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 understanding we should have you know, to allow us to, to design a, a strategy in China. So Michael and Bryce, I, yeah, hand over it back to you. Yeah. Great, thank, thanks a lot, Gary. That was really fascinating. Um, um, it's so difficult uh, and so challenging in such a short space of time to, to, to really go through all the intricacies of uh, the China e-commerce system. Um, we're, uh, just in the next uh, next few minutes, in about 15 minutes, we're going to uh, just, uh, uh, Paul and I have some questions for you, and then we're going to open it up for you uh, uh, to, to ask any questions to, to Gary or the panel. Uh, that's, uh, um, that's in the Q&A section of your, uh, on the bottom of your screen. You can just uh, submit any questions that you like and we'll try to get to them. Um, I think one of the questions that, uh, that I always have and I get a lot, Gary, uh, is, is do, you, do you think that the West, Western platforms can, can learn something from this? I mean, is it, or do you think that the whole Chinese e-commerce ecosystem is too China-centric? Um, what can Western platforms like uh, uh, some of the other uh, global platforms, what can they learn from the Chinese experience? Yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you, Bryce. I, say, I think this is a very uh, interesting question. And I think this question always brought up by our global colleague. Uh, actually, uh, when we, whenever we have this kind of the global uh, 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 sharing or global session, so actually Alibaba model has been uh, proved a very successful um, um, business model uh, in terms of the sales, sales revenue generation and the business efficiency uh, and the consumer experience. And uh, with this model, actually Alibaba actually managed a relative uh, good balance among platform, consumer and the brand. Actually, we already see this, uh, some of the global platform are doing the similar model so if you look at uh, what uh, Mercado Libre is doing in, uh, in Latin America, they actually is, uh, is doing a very similar model. And also um, uh, what Lazada is doing um, uh, in Southeast Asia, uh, they are also use a similar model. So I, I think this, is a, um, this actually is a very uh, interesting model. And the, the essential of this model is how to balance manage a good balance among three interest parts, three interests, right? So one is a platform interest, another is a brand interest, and, the, uh, and another piece is a consumer interest. So I, 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 I believe this, can, uh, this kind of model will be um, uh, not only uh, uh, valid uh, in China, and it will be also, uh, could be also a good uh, reference for the rest of the world. So Bryce, back to you. Yeah, thanks. Um... We've got a couple of questions, Gary. Uh, I'm just gonna, on the Q&A about live streaming. Uh, I think live streaming is really fascinating. You, you mentioned live streaming is about live service, live sales and live campaign. And I agree, a lot of people uh, in the West equate it with like a Q, QVC thing, where it's like a TV thing, but it's gotten really extensive now. Um, what, do you think live streaming e-commerce is, uh, once someone asked about it, what's the reason that, um, that the live streaming hasn't really taken on it in, in the West. Do you think it's the lack of infrastructure? Is it a cultural thing? Um, what, what do you think are the reasons that live streaming is, it hasn't taken on the popularity that it has uh, in, in China in the West? So, so Bryce, actually, I, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's it's also very uh, uh, hot topic recently. We have lots of discussion with our uh, uh, with our partner and our uh, uh, our uh, global colleague about uh, how the uh, uh, live streaming uh, 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 work uh, works and uh, how uh, if this will be a phenomenon a phenomenon for the rest of market as well. The answer actually is yes because if I look at uh, what is happening in the uh, in the rest of uh, uh, in the other markets, live streaming actually is. Uh, is it becoming a global uh, uh, model? It's not only a China model, yeah. Um, there are lots of requests about uh, the infrastructure part, which is true. So this requires a, a, a strong um, uh, support of the basic internet infrastructure, including the bandwidth and the, and the hardware and the technology part, mm -hmm. yeah. And also this requires a lot of uh, um, um, uh, um, um, the, uh, the investment actually in, uh, um, in the content part and also in the how to develop your KOL, yeah. 
Uh, so actually, when we still, uh, talk about the live streaming, we have two models. One is uh, the, we call it the celebrity or KOL live stream model. Another actually is, uh, is, is uh, all we call the brand owned live stream model. Yeah. So I guess it's, uh, my point of view is uh, it's relatively easy to scale, uh, scale this uh, uh, brand owned live stream model to uh, 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 globally. Uh, it, will, it will be a very local um, relevant to look at the KOL live stream model because uh, this is quite a unique that uh, uh, each KOL have to be have to living in a specific ecosystem. Therefore, they are able to get the traffic support um, um, uh, enough tra traffic support in order to drive the high ROI. I don't know if that's answer your question or not, uh, Bryce. Yeah, it's good. Thanks. I think Paul has a question for you from the panel from the Q and A. Hey, Gary, that was great. Um, one one person is asking, what does the future look like? And I know, you know, it's 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 something that we get a lot in marketing, right? Uh, especially when you work in digital, when you work in technology. Uh, especially when you work here in China and, and understanding sort of your, your role now, what do you think the future of e-commerce looks like or the, e the future of shopping looks like in China and, 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 and the West? Yeah, um, that's uh, actually is a very big um, um, topic on how the future looks like. But let me explain a little bit more about uh, uh, my point of view that uh, what is important for the future e-commerce. Yeah. So e-commerce is not only a, 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 a platform, brand put a product on the platform and the consumer buy from the platform. That's actually was the, uh, uh, how uh, was a very uh, a traditional model and how we started, uh, how the platform and how brand started with their e-commerce, right? Um, the recent involvement is uh, uh, evolution actually is about uh, the data and about the algorithm, yeah. So you will see that uh, if you look at the um, uh, how the platform changes the rule to drive the traffic, it's all about your consumer preference. It's all about the algorithm to do the precise mapping between the consumer preference and the, 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 the brand supply. So this actually is become uh, more and more important. To do that, we need to have a, uh, uh, we need to uh, have a, a holistic view to understand how we drive the consumer preference, how we connect the consumer preference with your brand, yeah. Because the consumer might uh, 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 have a, their, their own preference, but how you make sure the brand will be well connected with this preference, therefore the system will be able to recognize this, pref uh, recognize this, uh, this and connect the consumer with your brand directly. So this is one of the key uh, development in uh, today's e-commerce. Another thing we just mentioned is live streaming. So live streaming is not only uh, 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 just uh, for fun, because uh, you think about that why live streaming is much, much more efficient than the traditional e-commerce, because the content is a 3D content. And uh, so for that, sorry, the live streaming is a 4D content and the short video is 3D, right? So, they are, so this actually is much, much efficient to, to deliver the message within the, within the uh, the, within the certain uh, time period. So take, uh, um, this will allow the consumer to interact with the, with the, uh, with the, uh, with the brand, with the retailer uh, in a real time base. So this actually is another uh, uh, phenomenon you, you, we will uh, see that's uh, uh, important, uh, important for the future e-commerce, yeah. So the, the, so the content part and uh, the live streaming part and the algorithm part, these are the three uh, major, major uh, trends that really are happening. And then the last piece actually um, I, I, I want to mention here is about uh, um, the social community. Yeah, because um, this is uh, what, uh, 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 what ha this has been discussed recently uh, in a very, uh, a very hot, uh, uh, in a very hot uh, uh, um, uh, discussion that about how we drive the uh, uh, the community, how we drive the private domains. Yeah. So when we say private domain, majorly we want to have, we, we want to group uh, people who has, uh, uh, who has shared the same preference, have, have the same interest together. This is what we call the community part. Yeah. So this actually are the um, um, uh, four important uh, uh, evolution I can foresee will impact the future e-commerce. Yeah. So Paul. Back, back to you. 
All right. Thanks, Gary. That was great. Great, great answer. Okay. Um, That's good. That's good. Paul, you want to go for one or should I? Yeah, no. So just to pick up on that private domain thing, right? One, uh, one person on the panel is asking and the audience is asking, how will private domain work in the U.S.? Um, I, 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 for this part, I uh, don't have that uh, 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 enough knowledge there for the U.S. market, but yeah. I can uh, uh, offer several, uh, 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 my observation. Yeah, for example, the, the first uh, thing, important thing is uh, we should enhance our CRM program, leveraging the digital technology. Yeah. So my background actually was CRM. So I, 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 I started to develop a CRM for our, most of our brand back to 20 years ago with a, a very tradi traditional uh, 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 model. CRM is still remain critical. I, it's, it's, it's actually is, a, is the center of the, of the consumer management, yeah. So how to use your CRM program to, connect, to talk to your consumer leveraging the new technology and do the reverse engineer of the whole process. This actually could be one of the uh, uh, framework we can follow and we can uh, redesign our journey, consumer journey with this, uh, with this framework. Uh, another part is uh, more and more brands have their own social media account and uh, they, are, they have their own um, um, uh, uh, content uh, uh, strategy, right? So we can leverage the social media account, we can leverage the content strategy to really drive the personalized communication. Of course, we need to understand mm -hmm. how we could use the technology, use the algorithm, use the data mm -hmm. in order to, do, uh, to deliver truly personalized communication. These are two uh, uh, observations from my side that might be useful for our, uh, for our uh, um, uh, colleagues and friends in uh, North America. Okay. Thanks, Gary. That's great. That great. Um, yeah, we got. We always ask this to to to, to people that come on, uh, and it's regarding uh, now that you've been in. Uh, obviously, you 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 went to Tsinghua University and Northwestern. Um, now that you've been in the corporate world for a long time, uh, and and what what do you think that when you see recent graduates that come to work at SD Lauder? Uh, what or you or any of your previous experiences? What do you what what advice can you give for us? What should we be teaching? What should we be teaching students today? What are the things that are important for for us to teach new graduates? Uh, what are the important things that they need to learn? Okay, so I uh, so thank you, Bryce, uh, for uh, for this uh, great question. Yeah. So maybe I can share with uh, 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 with you about uh, my experience, how I grew up, and how I uh, uh, developed my career. Because uh, I, I guess each people have their uh, uh, has their own strengths. But uh, uh, I could share with you that how I uh, uh, develop myself, right? So I think most importantly, I think that so I uh, we need to always keep the keep an open minded because. Uh, the, 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 the overall environment, the, the market, the environment the, the, uh, is changing so fast, right? So what, what I learned from, from my university, I almost forgot everything. So I have to keep learning, yeah. So to how to figure out a fast uh, learning, uh, 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 how to keep you learn fast and uh, uh, keep your uh, lifetime learning um, attitude, this is a critical important for no matter for the students, fresh, uh, uh, fresh uh, graduate students or, the, or for, um, for people like me, yeah. So we want to always keep ourselves um, um, open-minded and to learn uh, whatever, um, 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 uh, impo uh, what, whatever uh, important to, uh, to your business and to your life, yeah. So this is uh, 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 one critical thing to keep uh, open-minded and uh, keep learning and uh, and uh, make sure you will do the lifetime learning. Yeah, this is the first thing I, I believe is important. Yeah, the second part is uh, can, we might need a more broader knowledge can, uh, uh, versus uh, 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 because in, in lots of in, I, I believe that when uh, for most, lots of people, lots of students, when we study in university, we have some of our 
uh, we we focus uh, in some major uh, right. So for example, I, I my background was uh, comp computer science, but I believe that that's uh, this is just a starting point. We need to expand our knowledge and to really to learn from uh, not only uh, from one uh, uh, expertise. We also need to get knowledge in multiple aspects. So therefore, we are able to look at. Uh, uh, the challenge look at the opportunity from a more holistic view. I still want to use the e-commerce example. E-commerce is a truly end-to-end -end process, starting from the technology platform. So then, uh, then you need to understand the consumer. This is a, a little bit about the marketing and about the consumer insight. Then you need, to, then you need to understand the data. Data is a, is a mix of the consumer insight and the technology part. Then we need to understand the campaign. This is about the marketing part. Then you need to understand the, 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 the logistic and the custom service. This is about the supply chain part. So this is a, um, this require a very uh, broad knowledge. Yeah. So that's actually two advice I will, would like to uh, give our students. And also this is also how I develop myself yeah, in past years. So keep learning. So I, and then make sure you will become uh, your knowledge and your exposure, you will have broad exposure and to enhance your knowledge. Yeah. Okay, that's great, Gary. Because um, one of the questions that came in is all around, you know, differences in roles, right? So, you know, China, the, the, the Chinese ecosystem is very unique, right? Um, and the Western ecosystems are very unique, right? Just from a talent perspective, right? Uh, if there's a lot of there's a lot of Chinese students that are going abroad for education, coming back uh, here to Shanghai, to Beijing, to Shenzhen to work, right? Um, what sort of what what do you what are you are are a lot of your a lot of the things you're saying transferable? Are they universal, or do you think that there are specific needs and requirements? From uh, from this perspective versus a Western perspective, in terms of, you know, you talk about understanding, keeping open minded. Can you get a little bit more granular in terms of either hard skills or soft skills that some of these candidates would would need um, as they sort of enter into the workforce? Uh, maybe Paul, you need to please could you please repeat the question because your voice broke tonight. I, I, yeah, just some differences, just some hard and soft skills that you recommend to some of the students um, and graduates entering the workforce uh, that they would need, either from a China perspective, uh, perspective or Western perspective. Yeah, thank you, Joel. So, I think there's a lots of uh, aspects we can uh, 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 answer this question, but uh, my point of view is. We need a both hard skill and a soft skill. For the hard skill part, it's really about how broad your knowledge is. Yeah, because uh, definitely we need lots of expertise in the uh, specific area, like uh, algorithm, like uh, technology, like uh, 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 marketing, and like uh, analytical. But that's uh, uh, in, in general. This uh, no matter you you are specific. Uh, your uh, specific expertise in which area, you also need uh, this kind of broad understanding. Therefore, you are able to really understand how to put the end-to-end -to -end process together. Yeah, this actually is extremely important to you for the success of e uh, in the e-commerce uh, environment. Look at how China, uh, 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 Chinese digital uh, giants build up their super app. So which means they put everything within one app and uh, you basically you have all of the end-to-end -end process we need this app, right? So this will require a great understanding about uh, how I, uh, I can talk to our consumer at the uh, up funnel, how I do the conversion yeah, at the lower funnel and how we, we maintain them uh, after, after the purchase. So this is uh, about the hard skill part, it's about the knowledge. Yeah, it's about the, the broad aspect of your knowledge. And that's, this is also what I said, that's the, it's, the, it's very important for people to understand, uh, to keep learning, yeah. So but for the soft skill part, I think that there's a lot of aspect is critical uh, for the student to get success uh, for in, uh, in, the, in the market. For example, that's uh, 
we need to make sure that uh, we have the learning agility because uh, um, this is uh, uh, this is uh, this is something we need to be well trained for some oh, so for, uh, uh, to some extent because uh, 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 you you might be not able to go back to the school or go back to the university again to spend maybe three months to learn you need to leverage you whatever time you have to uh, for this kind of uh, uh, learning and also another thing is about uh, uh, we uh, we uh, uh, we just discussed that about uh, the um, um, uh, the open minded because uh, there's always something we don't understand and we need to really look at uh, how we can uh, 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 absorb the, 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 the knowledge, the, the messages, the new information from the market. Therefore, we are able to translate it into our action plan. Yeah. So I think these are the, 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 the broader technology and the learning agility and, uh, and the critical importance. And the last thing, uh, advice I would like to share with the uh, with our uh, students and this is also how I use that. Use the technology to learn because uh, usually we want to find the content and then we do we try to learn. But uh, use your technology because the content will find you. So you still remember that we are we are working in the internet environment and there's a lot of algorithm designed to feed the content to the right, right person. Yeah. So we need to also practice do the practice to learn how to let the content to find you train the system, let the system find you. This will save your, save your time and make your learning more efficient. So Paul, this is a couple of the advice I can, or an experience I can share with our students, yeah. Well, I, I just wanna, yeah, I wait, just wait. wanna thank you so much, Gary. Actually, the last thing you said was probably the scariest thing you said for an academic, which is, uh, you know, the university system has been built so long on this idea that we have the knowledge, you know, and, and if you come to us, we'll tell you what it is. But um, I think what you just said, uh, suggested is probably the, as they would say, the seeds of our own destruction, you know, that uh, if we can train technology to find the content we need, uh, you know, that's a whole new model. So anyway, it's uh, symptomatic of a very inspiring conversation, Gary. It's, uh, Really, I was hurriedly, uh, floridly taking notes because there was so much to, to take in. And uh, I, I know I personally uh, felt my learning curve, you know, just shut up in the hour we together. And I, I'm sure it was very much appreciated by our students. So I want to thank you very directly and personally for, for joining us and sharing your knowledge and your wisdom. And obviously a shout out to, to Paul and Bryce, my colleagues here for moderating the conversation. Um, I uh, thank you uh, all also for attending and um, Paul and I will have some other events lined up that we'll announce. Uh, we're going to try and keep the series going all through the year and uh, we're delighted to have you all join us. So uh, bye, bye for now, signing out.